What's the haps? I'm Moroku and welcome back to Sky Saga! Today, Radiant Worlds have put out an update for the game, the Alpha 4.5 update, which is mostly a bunch of balance changes and tweaks, but we're going to go through and have a look at them. So we're in the social hub because that's where a lot of the things you're going to find are going to have changed. So let's go have a look at that. Most of the vendors around here have all been rearranged for reasons I can't quite fathom. Uh, the the guy that used to be the what was it the Keystone vendor was in there is now food because I guess it looks kind of like a kitchen and the Keystone vendor now finds himself over here. You'll notice that the prices are a little different. So that is part of the balancing. A lot of the costs have been reduced on everything across the board as well as everything's just I think a little bit more visually clear. Keystones were often pretty. A lot of the colors were very faint on them. It's very hard to distinguish quite what exactly you were getting yourself into. So I think everything's a lot more visually obvious now. And that from everything I've seen so far, when you when you look at a keystone, it's usually it's fairly clear what you're getting yourself into. So you look at that, it does a, has a very bright green. It's a very bright white. It's a very bright yellow. It's kind of it's kind of more obvious now, and the costs are way down. I think some of the hard hard levels before would have been like five thousand knots. They're down to three thousand five hundred. So it's a little bit cheaper to buy those. Everything else is cheaper still. What have we got over here? We have got someone selling those materials. Those prices are down a little bit, I guess. Rose iron was two thousand, I think. I think, broadly speaking, across the board, a lot of things are down by a little over half of what they used to be. So, uh, for example, Temple is, I know that was a deed I had been looking at purchasing for myself, because I've got a bit of a Temple as my home island. So, I, I'd been contemplating buying it, but I think it was it was good 35000 I think, was the price on it, which I was kind of umming and ahhing about, because that's, that's a good chunk of cash. Now it's only 15750 so it's less than half what it used to be, which is quite nice. Um, I'm a little more tempted to buy that now. And, you know, the money I've got, you know, will go, will go a lot further in this marketplace than it would have done under the old marketplace. Uh, this guy used to be around the corner, now seems to be here selling what appears to be very similar recipes. But if you recall, like some of the most basic recipes started out at about 15,000 knots and went all the way up to like 50,000 knots. Now, some of the more exotic stuff like a gong is only 18,000, whereas your really basic stuff, your common things, animal skull on post is 6,750. That's not terribly hard to achieve at all. Those are pretty okay. So these balance changes should mean that you should be able to access recipes and things and start making your places look awesome a lot more, a lot quicker. Uh, additionally, XP has been improved across the board. If I bring up uh, the quests interface, uh, I've jumped a whole bunch of explorer ranks just because, quite frankly, they've reduced the costs for leveling up in rank. Previously, once you got beyond like level 10, suddenly the costs for the XP costs for leveling up just became like crazy, and the level I was I was at level I was at level 16, and I was 80,000 XP into the next level before leveling up. And with this update rolling in out, it reduced the cost of leveling from 16 to 17, but down to about 22,000. So I gained like three Explorer ranks in one go, which was kind of nice, to be honest. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, now getting from level 19 to 20 is only 30,000 XP. That is not terribly hard to achieve at all with quests and whatnot. So that's a much needed balance, something I've been kind of whinging about for a few weeks now. We got there's oh we got some some of the gear there we got the gain uh, the prices right down metal falchion the mainstay item number five at this vendor since the time immemorial has always been fifty thousand knots it's now down to twenty two thousand five hundred it's not bad at all if I didn't have that recipe I'd be quite tempted to go for twenty two thousand five hundred that's okay I still would like them to give me the dagger recipe but nonetheless it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Over here we've got some materials. You'll see that a lot of the icons have changed. I think one of the big o big overhauls in this is just the, just a lot of the iconography in the game, a lot of the item uh, item symbols and things. They all most of the crafting materials look kind of different now. It doesn't really do anything, but they all look kind of different. So that is something to look at as well. Uh, if we go have a look at the quests, I don't think there'll be much to see. I mean, I've done a bunch of them today, so I might not be able to show you that. Uh, I don't think there's much to change. There are definitely some new things in there. If we go to the Explorer Vendors, you will see uh, that th th there are definitely new quests that weren't there before. They're actually, in terms of the Explorer's Guild, a lot of the quests are similar to the ones that the, the hard mode quests on weekends... I call them hard mode. They were a little more challenging, a little more time-consuming than the standard quests. The ones that used to be available up on the mountain, they may still be. I presume they are, actually, to be honest. Uh, they, uh, the similar quests are available from this vendor, so these are just standard daily quests now. Complete the Tomb Adventure, it's going to ask you to go to very specific places and do very specific adventures, which was not just the common, that was never a common daily thing anymore. So now I need to go and do three very specific quests in one day for my dailies there, so... Uh, maybe that's a little more time consuming, but something to encourage you to invest more time. 
One of my gripes with this is that by default when you pick up a quest, it automatically tracks it. The little stars next to it, they come on by default, so you end up with... Yeah, it looks like that. When you take a bunch of quests, your interface looks like this. That. If you've got a huge monitor and a big resolution, it might not be too big, big a deal, but for me, who's running a 720 window, that takes up far more of the interface than I might like, so... I would say to Radiant Worlds, if we could have that sort of like a toggleable option, whether, you know, to auto-track quests on quest collection, that would be really nice if you could toggle that as an option. We have, again, recipe costs from the specialist vendors are way down. They don't, again, don't seem to be selling anything terribly different, but the costs are way down. Which is a little annoying for me because I just bought a whole ton of the Desert Survival stuff. I bought like three out of four pieces of those at ten tokens a time, and now they're all five, so that's fun. That's just cost me a lot of stuff, but never mind. Alpha 4 comes to an end in about a month, I believe, so it shall all be for naught, but never mind. Uh, you'll notice if you look at the mini-map, there's a bunch of icons that were not there before. We're about to head there now. In fact, you'll also see the mailboxes. Mailboxes are marked there, and if you have mail, they will flash on your they will flash on the mini-map to say, Hey, this is the thing you should probably go have a look at, because you have something there. There is also appears to be some sort of UI bug where my quests were. I don't know what that's about, but that's there. So, yeah, PvP has been uh, restored in Alpha... PvP was in Alpha 3, but it had a lot of netcode issues. If you go back and look at my PvP video, it was really difficult to play. And it's back. I have already recorded a video. You will be seeing that very shortly on my channel. Uh, and I can tell you that it works a lot better, and obviously with, with, with PvP being in the game, all the relevant PvP affiliations are here. We have a vendor which will sell us some recipes. I imagine, actually, to be fair, if I'm going to get a dagger recipe, this might well be where I will get a dagger recipe from, and I'm hoping it's going to cost me less than five tokens, quite frankly. I think when things like scimitars are five, I can hope that the daggers are probably going to be about five as well, to be honest. And then we've got some really fancy stuff like the metal war hammers for twelve, which are pretty cool. So I imagine, I, I, I do think that's probably going to be where a lot of the weapons are going to be collected, to be honest. Uh, PvP has stopped for the evening, so I'm not going to be able to do much here if I go up to the arena gate. It is unavailable, that is unfortunate. Because I would have liked to have played a lot more of that this evening. The session was not as long as I would have wanted it to be, but obviously this is alpha. I think they're still working out a lot of kinks. I think this is still just sort of testing to make sure PvP is functional, and I can confirm that it kind of is. So we've got some PvP quests. They... Uh, they now take up more space in your quest tracker, and I can't help but feel with three quest givers giving you daily quests, I rather feel that, to be honest, we really need more quest log space. Just to deal with the fact that there are now 15 daily quests, and only 10 quest slots. But also, some of these are totally not working because I have completed a PvP match and it has not done that. I have completed a Capture the Flag match because that was the only game type. It has not checked these quests off. That ma the match I did should have counted for both those quests, I would have said, and it totally didn't, so... PvP quests kinda bugged, unfortunately, which is gonna make it a little harder than you might like to get the XP that you want in order to buy the very cool gladiator gear. But, never mind. There have been a number of tweaks to this area, I will say, um, because I don't recall being able to get back to bridge at the start from this ship, but the ship, is, the ship's nose, the prow, is a lot longer. Don't know what that's about, but there you go. I guess it's a quick way to get back to here. Also, there are a lot of uh, parkour-y kind of exploits that you can get to places where you're not supposed to get to. They took those away. They've taken away all my parkour exploits. I am unhappy about this. I like climbing on silly things. And there was no reason for them to take away my climbing on silly things, but never mind. Uh, one last thing to look at is I think a lot of tooltips have been vastly improved. Certainly as far as armor goes, those are the things I've mainly noticed. We've got, if you look at something like the Guardian's Helmet, it's like heavy armor, it gives high protection, but reduces your speed. If we look at Frost Steel, it's like great combat protection, but a little bit and a little bit of heat protection. If we look at Palace Guard, it's it's slight combat, no, no impact on speed movement, so that's what that is. Your Desert Survival stuff is excellent heat protection and minimal combat. The wolf skin stuff has now become leather, that is great protection from the cold, but minimal combat, I guess you kind of knew that. And Warlock, I have wondered for the longest time what the heck Warlock armor actually did. Apparently it's, it's protection against both heat and cold, but doesn't provide any combat protection. So, in case you're wanting all-round elemental protection, Warlock is actually the way to go. Who'd have thunk it? There was no way to tell that before, but now we know, which is kind of cool. I like that. Oh, I will note, additionally, in terms of ores, it might be best to go back to my home to show you this, actually, to be honest. Uh, but there has been one one new ore added to the game, and they've done something with a couple of the other ores. 
So it would be best to go back to my place and show you these things. Okay, back at mine, I'm gonna go have a look at where I keep all my exotic stuff, the stuff that you get from bosses and whatnot, which is this top right chest up here. Normally, I keep a lot of marks and things like Roots of the Mountain, they're all kept neatly in here. I keep all that stuff there to be turned into Abyssium and Crimsonite as, as and when I need those particular materials. Now, I don't, I'm not sure that those materials have been removed, I'm pretty sure they're probably still in the game, given that I still have stuff like my Abyssium helmet. Those materials are clearly still in the game, and I've had it, heard it confirmed from another player that who had turned those into ores that they still have those ores. So those materials are still there, but the marks that you get them from, well, I've had mine all, my, all mine deleted from my chest. So I'm guessing the marks of the desert and marks of the forest and marks of the mountain, those don't exist, as well as the red equivalents. In their place, when I did my daily adventures today, I found in the chest just before you go through the keystone portal to leave the adventure, we got one of these. A mark of bravery. Not got from the boss, got from the chest, which is unusual, because normally the marks got from the bosses themselves. Which, maybe that's an anti-farming mechanism, because, hey, I did, I very recently put out a video saying, hey, this is how you farm this really, really easily. Maybe that was a little bit exploitative, so maybe this is an anti, anti-farming anti measure in that regard. But what we can do is, if I can, I can dismantle that, and then we get this. It's high iron, which is purple. I like purple. I'm gonna have to start making things out of purple. I have no idea how that stacks up against other things. I don't know how... I imagine it's better than your standard materials. I have no idea how it would stack up against Abyssium or Crimsonite. And as of yet, I don't know if there is an equivalent to one of those in the hard mode adventures. As I say, I got that from the daily adventure, which would be considered to be a medium difficulty adventure. So, I imagine there would be a hard mode equivalent, but right now... Can't tell you. Go adventure, go find out for yourself. So that, that just about wrap, wraps up everything that I've found so far. I think it probably covers a lot of the things in Alpha 4.5. Some very interesting changes. Some very interesting stuff indeed. And I'm looking forward to more PvP because I do think it works a lot better now and it's a lot of fun. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. This has been Sky Saga, the 4.5 update. I'll see you next time. Bye.